in this video, we're going to ask the question, how many cut vertices could a connected graph possibly ever have? If you don't know what a cut vertex is, or if you want a reminder, click on this video or see the links in the description below where we talk about the definition of a cut vertex. Now, just to get started, let's think about a couple of extreme examples. If I think about the complete graph on n vertices, that means every pair of vertices has an edge between them, then there cannot be any cut vertices. Removing a single vertex from a complete graph does not disconnect the graph. On the other extreme, think about a path on n vertices where n is at least three. Then, neither the n vertices are cut vertices, but all of the interior ones are cut vertices. So that graph has n minus two cut vertices. Could you ever have a graph which is connected and has more than n minus two cut vertices? The answer to that question is no. And we'll see that with this theorem, which says, Every non-trivial connected graph has at least two vertices that are not cut vertices. Let's think about how to prove this. And we'll do so by contradiction. That means we will suppose that our theorem is not true and see what happens. That means that there must exist a non-trivial connected graph which doesn't have that property. That means that at most one vertex is a non-cut vertex. If you think about it, it means that all vertices are cut vertices except possibly for one. The trick is to take two vertices, u and v, whose distance in the graph is equal to the diameter of the graph. Now remember that in our graph, every vertex is a cut vertex except possibly for one of them, which means that if we're looking at u and v, at least one of them has to be a cut vertex. Let's say that one is v. Okay. If V is a cut vertex, that means that removing it will disconnect our connected graph. Well, let's just think about what we have. We've got our graph, and on one side we have a U, and on the other side, far away, we have a V. And we know that if we remove that vertex V, we've disconnected the graph. So I'll draw some red blobs to be the red components of G minus V. And I'll take a vertex W to be in one of the components of G minus V where U is not. Now I know that every UW path must go through vertex V. We've seen this argument before. It's because there are no UW paths in the graph without V, they're in different components. And so the graph originally was connected, which means all paths that went from one to the other must have gone through that vertex that we removed. Well, now let's think about what this means though. The distance from U to W has to go through a path that first hits V. That means that the distance from U to W is bigger than the distance from U to V. But the distance from U to V is equal to the diameter, which is defined to be the maximum distance in any pair of vertices in our graph. So that's the contradiction. That cannot happen, and therefore it's not true that the theorem is false, in other words, it's true that the theorem is true. Now, I'd like you to notice something. This proof actually showed that if you take any vertex that's a peripheral vertex, that vertex cannot be a cut vertex. That's what we actually showed within the proof here. So that's an interesting fact. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Beside me are some links to the first part of this video where we define cut vertices and also a link to a video where we talk about the ideas of diameter and periphery and all of that stuff. So I hope you've had fun and I'll see you next time.